Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless. This is the quiz where all the questions have been asked to 100 people before the show. All our contestants have to do is come up with the answers those 100 people couldn't think of. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm John. Uh, this is my friend Tom and we're from Edinburgh. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Sue. This is my husband John and we're from Surrey. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Ian, this is my wife, Julie, and we're from Glasgow. And finally, couple number four. I'm Gary, this is Billy, and we are cousins from the Wirral. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Very warm welcome to Pointless. Wonderful to have you with us. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Here to eat these quizzes with some fava beans and a nice Chianti, it's my Pointless friend, it's Richard. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Now, on the last show, we had a big setup at the beginning. We said that this is a grudge match. It's going to be Edinburgh versus Glasgow. Uh, and then our uh, Edinburghans and our Glaswegians got knocked out in round one and round two. <laughs> but at least they're back. So the they're grudge back. match begins again. Yes, that's nice. And they're separated this time. What do we call people from Edinburgh? Edin Edinburgh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you think Tom and John will know what people from Edinburgh are called? No. Judging on their performance on the last show, no, I don't know. <laughs> no. I th I'm joking. What do you call people from Edinburgh? I don't know. Edinburgh. 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 That's right! You knew! Hey. What do you call people from Edinburgh? Does anyone know? Scottish. Scottish, Scottish is not that answer. <laughs> uh, we'll go with Edinburghers. Anyway, either way. For neither way. Anyway, it's nice to have them back. And then yeah. grudge match. Nice. Lovely. Fun. Grudge nice. match, grudge match. Here we go. Let's do it. Let's play Pointless. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, so Paul and Joe didn't win the jackpot last time. That means today's jackpot starts off... at £4,000. That's huge. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> Just remember this. The pair with the highest score at the end of each round gets eliminated, OK? So keep your scores nice and low, nothing to worry about. Best of luck. All four pairs. Our first category today is... British currency. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, and the question concerns... Things displayed on 50 pence pieces. Richard. Uh, yeah, 2019 was the 50th anniversary of the 50 pence piece being introduced to uh, the UK. We're going to ask you seven questions on each pass about things that have been uh, on commemorative 50 pence coins during that time. So it'll be seven on the first pass, seven on the second, 14 and all to have a go at home. So things that have been on 50 pence pieces in their first 50 years of their history. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So let's reveal our first board of seven things that have been on 50 pence pieces, and here they come. We have got the physicist whose book Brief Answers to the Big Questions was published posthumously in 2018, the artist who designed the reverse sides of the UK's first decimal coins, Battle of 1066 that ended in the defeat of Harold II of England, the scientist who became master of the Royal Mint in 1699, the student who in May 1954 became the first runner to break the four-minute mile barrier, the composer of the 1940s work The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra, and the rule explained on the London 2012 football 50 pence coin. I'll read those one last time. The physicist whose book, Brief Answers to the Big Questions, was published posthumously in 2018. The artist who designed the reverse sides of the UK's first decimal coins. Battle of 1066 that ended in the defeat of Harold II of England. The scientist who became master of the Royal Mint in 1699. The student who in May 1954 became the first runner to break the four-minute mile barrier. The composer of the 1940s work, The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. And the rule explained on the London 2012 football 50 pence coin. There we are. Tom... Remind us all about yourself. Uh, yes, I'm Tom from Edinburgh, uh, and I'm a financial services recruiter. And, um, yeah, uh, my friend John here uh, used to work with me in financial service recruitment as well. So. There, I'm proud Edinburghian. Proud Edinburgh. Edinburgh, yeah. Edinburgh, <laughs> Edinburgh. We've got it, we, let's fix on Edinburgh. We're going to yeah. go with that. Tell us something about yourself, Tom, that nobody knew. Uh, so I'm part of a squash club, so I play squash competitively uh, a few times a month. And I've also uh, competed in a number of uh, skiing competitions around Europe and in Canada. Do you notice how Tom couldn't look me in the eye when he said all that? <laughs> he just couldn't look me in the eye. Really? Yeah, yeah. delivered it all out there. Yeah, it's because he's, he's a showman. Possibly the greatest. Yeah, the greatest <laughs> showman. There we are. OK, Tom. What are the answers to these clues? They've all been designs on 50p pieces. 
What's it going to be? Uh, going to go for the Battle of 1066 that ended in defeat of Harold II of England. Go for Battle of Hastings. Battle of Hastings, says Tom. Let's see how many of our 100 people knew that. It's right. 73. <laughs> well, it gets us off to a good start, Tom. Yeah, released in 2016, 950 years after that battle. And it showed the, whoever it is, almost certainly not Harold being uh, shot in the eye with the arrow. We would have, we'd have known more about it, I think, if it had been shot in the eye, exactly. surely. I think it was Dave. <laughs> Dave Archer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, John. John P. Hi. Look at that. <laughs> Lovely to have you here, John. Thank uh, you. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I used to be an electronics engineer. I retired two years ago, as did my wife Sue. We've been married for 50 years. Back in the 60s, I used to play in various bands around London and American Air Force bases. And What did you retired. play? What did you play? Guitar and bass. Guitar and bass guitar. So yeah. what, what kind of bands were you playing? Uh, we used to play blues, lots of covers, Beatles stuff, 60s, anything that people wanted to hear. That's right. Do you still play? No, I mess around with an acoustic guitar, get together with some friends sometime and we oh, nice. relive old memories, but uh, nothing serious. Nothing serious. Now, John, what are you going to go for on our 50 pence piece board? Well, it's difficult, but... There are a couple up there, aren't there? I think I'll have to go for the student who in... May 1954, broke the four-minute barrier, which was Roger Bannister. Roger Bannister, says John P. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Roger Bannister. He's right. 73 is the only score we have so far, and you passed that. 53. <laughs> there we are. Well played, John, released in 2004 to commemorate 50 years of that event. It's mm. just a pair of legs with a stopwatch in the background. So not even got Roger Bannister's face. Literally just his legs. Just his legs. Someone at some point must have put banisters in Roger Bannister's house. That is an anecdote. <laughs> but some carpenter or something I, must yeah. have gone and fixed must Roger Bannister's Roger. banisters. I've just done Roger's banisters. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It'd be someone in a pub somewhere like Henley or something yeah. who's dined out on that for years and no one believes him. Yeah. But someone must have. Listen, Roger Bannister didn't go through his entire life with his banisters intact. That's no. for sure. If you have at any point, or did at any point, fix Roger Bannister's banisters, do let us know. <laughs> Thank you. Equally, if you ever fix Lionel Blair's stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, Julie. Hello. Julie, welcome back. <laughs> uh, lovely to have you here from Glasgow. Thank uh, you. Remind us all about yourself, Julie. Um, I'm Julie. I'm a fundraising manager um, uh, from Glasgow. Uh, I'm also a big animal lover, so I'm a trustee for a dog and cat home in Edinburgh as well. So. Travel a bit to Edinburgh too. So being a trustee of a dog and cat home, what yes. does that involve you doing? Um, I sit on the board and support the, the management team okay. to, to make sure we can get, look after as many dogs and cats as we can. Very nice. What sort of capacity do you have in a, in a home like that? Well, that's putting you on the spot, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, there's you, too many. You can either say lot or too many. Homes, there too we many are. But homes, for, yeah. do you, uh, yeah, you, they come in at a faster rate than you can find homes for them. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, Julie, there is your board. Um, which of these 50p pieces are you going to go for? Um, I think I'm going to have to go for the bottom one and say the offside rule. The offside rule. Okay, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the offside rule. It's right. 73 is the high score, 53 is the low. You passed both of them. 43, all the threes. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, they minted 29 different commemorative coins for the 2012 uh, Olympics. That seems too many to me. Mm. How did they illustrate the offside rule? Maybe with a referee's assistant raising a flag and someone at home going... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. OK, now then, Billy. Right. Billy, welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here from the Wirral. Yeah. Tell us all about yourself, Billy. Uh, so I'm a care manager for people with learning disabilities and mental health. Um, I also like to play American football. Um, How often do you play American football? I've recently stopped. I stopped to get married. Um, and that just kind of turned into a longer period of time than I wanted it to be. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to get trying back. Trying to get back in. Has someone come and filled your place? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the dog-eat-dog -dog world of it American is. football. It I can't is, yeah. believe it. Well I, well, I hope someone's watching and feels sorry for you and gets you <laughs> back in the side. Um, Billy, this board is all yours. Do you want to go through it and fill in all the blanks that have been left for you? All the answers that I know have been taken, to be you can, honest You can have, you. A, have fun guessing. I really... 
I knew I knew the Battle of Hastings, um, the offside rule is what I would have went for, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know any composers. I'm a little bit too young for that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really stuck. This at the is moment. fun. You're gonna, so you're literally going to have to make something up. What do you want? Do you want to make up a physicist what or I'd a composer go, or a scientist? What I go for is the is the physicist whose book brief answers to the big question. But I'm, what I'd say is Stephen Hawking. But I, I'm not sure if that's the, the right answer. Stephen Hawking sounds like a good candidate. Let's try it. Stephen Hawking says, Billy, how many of our 100 people said Stephen Hawking? It is absolutely Stephen Hawking. Very well done indeed, Billy. Down it goes. 43 is our lowest score, and you pass it down to 29. Very well done indeed. Well, that fell very nicely. Could only be Stephen Hawking. Uh, and, yeah, that features his equation for black hole thermodynamics. Which... All on the back of a 50p coin. Yeah, would you like me to go through it? <laughs> Please. It's a... Uh... Sorry? Oh, Hugh Edwards says he's got to do the news, so we can't. Fair enough. Let's Fair go enough. through this board, shall we? Um... We'll leave the artist, because that is a pointless answer. Uh, the scientist who became master of the Royal Mint. I'm going to guess Isaac Newton. You are but, correct. Oh, see. Yep. 15 for that, you'll know the composer. Benjamin Britten. Benjamin Britten. Would have scored you 14 points and very, very well done at home if you knew this one. It's a pointless answer. And it was Christopher Ironside. Christopher Ironside, a pointless answer. Good to have someone doing one side of a metal coin. And who's named to be called Ironside? Copperside would be better, but you know. Or Nickelside. Or Nickelside, yeah. Or Nicholas Copperside. <laughs> <laughs> I never finished that book. <laughs> uh, thank you very much indeed. OK, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. 29, the best score. Very well done indeed. But see, sometimes it's worth being on that last podium because you would never have gone for that if you'd no, been no. further up the line. Uh, so there we are, 29, then we travel up to 43. It's all in the right order. 43, Julian Ian, well done. 53, John P and Sue, well done. And 73, Tom and John L. So a little bit of work from you needed, John L, to keep you in the game, but good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put seven more clues up on the board, and here they are. These are all 50 pence P designs. What are they? Stories about this fictional detective include The Sign of the Four and The Final Problem. The historic landscape garden and UNESCO World Heritage Site in the borough of Richmond upon Thames. The medal that has been the highest decoration for valour in the British Armed Forces since 1856. The lexicographer who published his Dictionary of the English Language in 1755. The conservation organisation established in 1961 that's known for its panda logo. The city that hosted the 2014 Commonwealth Games. And the name most commonly given to the 6th of June 1944 when Allied forces landed in Normandy. I'll read those all again. Stories about this fictional detective include The Sign of the Four and The Final Problem, the historic landscape garden and UNESCO World Heritage Site in the borough of Richmond upon Thames, the medal that has been the highest decoration for valour in the British Armed Forces since 1856, the lexicographer who published his Dictionary of the English Language in 1755, the conservation organisation established in 1961 that's known for its panda logo, the city that hosted the 2014 Commonwealth Games, and the name most commonly given to the 6th of June 1944 when Allied forces landed in Normandy. Gary. You are welcome. Good to have you here on Pointless. Tell us all about yourself. I travel up and down the country trying to sell our wares. I, I sell medical, medical equipment to the NHS. Do you sell very high-end medical it's equipment? It's quite a mix. We, we sell things as high-end as defibrillators, but then we sell little plasters about that big. Have you got a spiel, Gary? It depends what we're selling. I'm picturing you on the Dragon's Den type, that, that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, what are your hobbies, Gary, when you get uh, I'm currently learning to play the guitar with my little girl. It's given me more of a chance of influence in her taste in music. Steer Very away strong. from what a mother listens yes. to. Yes, Very good. Very good. OK, uh, Gary, there you are on 29. Fabulous performance from Billy. Uh, pulled one out of the bag there. Can you do the same on this board? What are the answers to these clues? They've all been designs on 50p pieces. I'm thinking the conversation organisation established in 1961 as the WWF. The WWF says Gary for conservation. OK, let's see if that's right. There's your red line. Get below that. Through you go to round two. It is right. 54, not bad at all. I think you've done enough there. Takes your total up to 83. Very well done. Very well done, yeah. Later branched out into wrestling. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nine to add to that. Thank you. Yep. 
Look at that beautiful. All the threes there now. Because that, oh, it that's was bothering lovely. me before that 29 wasn't any yeah. three. And now Let's look. stop here. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and now then, Ian. Hi. Ian, uh, welcome back. Thank you. Remind us all about yourself, Ian. Uh, my name's Ian, I'm from Glasgow. I work in IT and also a keen guitarist. Quite a lot of... Did anyone, did anyone bring any guitars with them? <laughs> that green room could have been amazing. That's a shame. That is a shame. Oh. Ah, that'd be fun. No. All of them picking away on... No, you're right. No. Um, Ian, um, we're not playing guitar and not working for your charity. What, uh, what else? What else do you do? I like to spend time with my four-year-old daughter and, uh, like yourself, I'm trying to influence her taste in music. Very good. How's that going? We're getting there with the Beatles. Yeah. That's quite easy. That's good. Excellent. Good stuff. Now, Ian, there you are. You're on 43. If you can score 39 or less, you're home and dry. Unsurprisingly, I'm going to take the city that hosted the 2014 Commonwealth Games. That was Glasgow. Glasgow, says Ian. <laughs> that was a gimme, wasn't it? OK, here is your red line. <laughs> if you can get below that with Glasgow, through you go to round two. It is Glasgow. Very well done. Look at that. Well, 16. First individual score of the round so far. 59 is your total. Well played, Ian. That fell very nicely. Yeah, people from Glasgow are called Glasborgians. <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness we sorted that out. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Sue, welcome to Pointers. Hello. Um, lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Sue. Um, I'm a retired school secretary. I worked my best last job in an international school, 73 nationalities across the teachers and uh, pupils. Um, so that was absolutely wonderful. Uh, but I'm equally ecstatic about being retired. Oh. I read a lot now and um, I've taken up aqua aerobics, <laughs> which is... Wow. I know, but it's really good. I <laughs> yeah. bet. Well, I, I, Hard I, work. I've got arthritis, but it actually helps. So, yeah, And I bet. Um, we spend more time with our grandchildren now and um, say hello to Brooke. <laughs> She's Brooke. three. Hi, Brooke. <laughs> Um, fantastic. Sue, that sounds lovely. Now, you are on 53. We're looking for a score of 29 or less from you. Uh, I know a few of them. Um, I think I'm going to go for the historic landscape garden and say Q. You're going to go for Q. Q, says Sue. Uh, here is your red line. Can you get below that with Q? Let's find out. It is Q. And you've done it. Very well done. Look at that. 26. Perfectly judged. Taking your total up to 79. Beautifully played, Sue. Well done. Yeah, it uh, came out, it celebrated 250 years of Kew Gardens. It's amazing, Kew. It's fun. Is it? Yeah. Is there a big Kew? <laughs> <laughs> do you think, actually, do you think a lot of people maybe don't go to Kew Gardens just because subliminally oh, they, they think, think it'll take, oh, yeah, it's think it'll take too long? Oh, yeah. yeah. Always like that Michael McIntyre gag when he said, my car, you know, the car's get from getting from A to B, but I live in Q. It's good. <laughs> uh, thank you very much indeed. Um, so, John L. John L. Welcome back. Remind us all about yourself, John. Uh, so, I'm John, and uh, I work in recruitment like Tom. Um, but in my spare time, I like to play rugby, and uh, I also like to think I'm an all right cook. An all right, so what do you cook, John? Um, my, I guess, speciality would be a beef wellington. Um, oh, no, that's not. That's not easy. No. Not for the faint-hearted. So, you, a fillet of beef. Yes. Do you make it with pate? Do you put a bit of pate in there? Sometimes you yeah. do. Yeah, uh, mushroom and chestnut mushroom. sometimes. Oh, uh, nice. But mostly it's a lot of butter and bacon to help serve. A lot of butter and bacon. <laughs> that just sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, John, now then, you have to score nine or less. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> um, that board's all yours. Do you, do you fancy just sort of... Taking us gently through it. Yeah. Um, so I, th I know the bottom one is I'm fairly sure it's um, D Day, uh, the D Day landings. Then the medal that was the highest decoration, and it's the Victoria Cross. Um, I'm not sure about the one about the dictionary, but I think my best shout would probably be taking a punt on the top one. Um, so I think I'll go with. Uh, Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes for the top one. OK, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sherlock Holmes. There is your red line. It's right. <laughs> 32 for Sherlock Holmes. 105, your total. 
Yeah, released in 2019, that coin. It's rather sweet. It has a silhouette of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, but then it has the, the titles of lots, lots of his most famous stories and cases. But obviously, it's a 50 pence piece, so they are written in very, very, very tiny writing. And the designer said, the way to look at them is get out a My magnifying, magnifying glass. glass. That's nice, See, that's just brilliant. Clever, isn't it? That's sort all of clever art that we're all just carrying around in our pocket. Yeah. We value it at just 50p. It's worth a lot more. Yeah. Surely. Oh, well, I I mean, I've, I've got know. a 50p if you'd like to buy one from me. I would, I, I would gladly buy one. Seven pounds. I, <laughs> cheap at twice the price. Excellent. Shall we fit in this board? Yes. Um, the medal, you're quite right, was the Victoria Cross. Would not have seen you through because it would have scored 42. And you knew the bottom one as well was D-Day. That wouldn't have seen you through either because it would have scored 64. But the lexicographer would have seen you through. We only know two lexicographers in this country. One is Susie Dent and the other one is... Dr Johnson. Samuel Dr. Johnson. Dr Samuel Johnson, absolutely. He would have scored you eight points. Would have seen you safely through. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are at the end of our first round. I know, it went by like that. Um, we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs, and John, L, and Tom, I'm sorry to say, it is you. It's been great having you on the show. Thank you so much for playing, playing so well, but uh, this is the end of the road. Uh, thanks, John and Tom. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Very well done. We made it through the 50 pence piece round. Fantastic. Ian, lowest individual scorer. Ian and Julie, lowest joint scorers, in fact. Uh, but well done, everyone. Best of luck for this next round. Our category for round two today is... Board games. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many spaces on the Monopoly board that contain repeated letters as they could, Richard. Yes, yeah, simply any space on the classic London version of uh, the Monopoly board that has the same letter in it anywhere twice. Doesn't have to be next to each other. So just the same letter repeated at any point uh, in its name. Thank you very much indeed, Sue. Um, mm. Mm. I'll just give you a moment to think about it. Mm. No, I've got one. Oh, <gasps> I'm Hello. just going to go back <laughs> yeah, to <okay>. Sue. <laughs> Sue. I'm going to say Liverpool Street Station. Liverpool Street Station, says Sue. Let's see if that is right. Well, do you know what? I think it is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Liverpool Street Station. It's right. Oh, look how right it is. Look at that. 12. Very well done indeed. <laughs> Liverpool Street Station. I mean, you're not mucking about there. It's got two L's, two I's, two R's, three O's, two S's, <laughs> four T's and three E's. Four T's. Four T's. Can you imagine? No. Thank you. Uh, Ian, what are you thinking of? I'm, I'm hoping that just visiting is a space. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said just visiting. It's right. 12 is what we've got for Liverpool Street. Just visiting... It's a point of Very well done indeed. Once again, Ian knocks it out the park. That adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £4,250. It scores you nothing and uh, earns you our undying respect. Well done. Very nicely done. Same as the in-jail square, where you also have taken in-jail uh, as an answer. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Gary? I'm trying to think a bit laterally. I'll go for community chest. Community chest, says Gary. Let's see how many of our 100 people said community chest. It's right. 12's the high score, zero is the low. Look at that, down to ten. Very well done indeed, Gary. <laughs> yeah, C's and M's and T's in community chest. There Two of each. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so, we are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Nothing, the best score of the past. Well done, Ian. Then up to ten, where we find Gary and Billy. Then up to twelve, where we find Sue and Johnny P. So, uh, yes, John, you know what you need to do this mm. time. Find a nice, low-scoring answer. I hope you've got a good, obscure one up your sleeve. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? So, Billy, remember, we're looking for the name of any space on the classic London Monopoly board that has at least one letter repeated. 
Um, I'll go for Chance. Chance, right. It's very... The, the sister space to Gary's answer there. OK, Chance, says Billy. Uh, here is your red line. It's quite low at this stage, but let's see how far down the column you get with Chance. Six. Takes your total up to 16. Very good. Uh, yeah, very well played. I'll tell you what, as soon as you said that, I thought, oh, you've forgotten that has to have repeated letters. And then I realised there was two Cs in it. <laughs> so it goes to show, doesn't it? There is actually a Chance Street in London. Obviously, it's not named after Chance Street. Interesting. Shoreditch. Chancery Lane. Yeah, Chance Street. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Mm. Uh, now, Julie. Um... I'm hoping Electric Company. The Electric Company. OK. You need to score 15 or less. Here's your red line. Get below that with Electric Company. And you're into the head-to-head. -head. How many people said Electric Company? You've done it. Very well done, indeed. Down you go. Mm -hmm. Down to four. That's a beautiful answer. Well played. Good work on podium two there. Yes. Now, Johnny P, it's you, I'm afraid. You've got a bit of an uphill struggle here. You've got to somehow earn yourself three points or less. We're wanting the space on a Monopoly board that has repeated letters in its name. OK, can I go for Fenchurch Street Station? Oh, following Sue's lead there. Fenchurch Street Station. OK, here is your red line. Get below that with Fenchurch Street Station and you are in the head-to-head. -head. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Fenchurch Street Station. It's right. Ooh, six! <laughs> Very close. Nice. That takes your total up to 18. And very similar in terms of the repeated letters. You've got three E's, two N's, two C's, two H's, two S's, four T's and two R's in Fenchurch Street Station. Wow. How about that? Um, there's a couple of answers that would have seen you through. There's only one pointless answer in the whole game. We've already had that, so very well played on podium two. But to uh, collect £200 or uh, pass go, that would have been one point. You'd have got three points for Marlborough Street. Uh, you'd have got four for Whitechapel Road, five for Euston Road, five for Coventry Street. You'd have got six for Go to Jail, free parking, uh, and Bow Street. You've got seven for Marlebone Station, Pentonville Road, and Whitehall. Those are the low scorers. Let's take a look at the top three answers. They are as follows. Pall Mall would have scored you 23. There's a lot of L's in that. Park Lane would have scored you 25. And Mayfair up the top there would have scored you 29. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we find ourselves at the end of second round. And uh, that means we have to say goodbye to another of our pairs. John and Sue, I'm afraid it's you. We have to say goodbye to you. Thank you so much for playing. We'll see you again next time. Look forward to that very much. Uh, thanks so much. In the meantime, John and Sue. Thank you. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. Many, many congratulations, Ian and Julie, Gary and Billy. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, currently standing at £4,250. That's turning into quite an exciting jackpot, and you're just one round away from getting to play for it. Who's going to play, though? You now get to play as a pair, and the first pair to win two questions will be going through to the final. Well... It's nice to see Glasgow getting through this time. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. They, they beat Edinburgh. I mean, you really did beat Edinburgh this time, didn't you? And a pointless, pointless answer, answer as well. Yeah. Tough to beat, I think. Tough to beat. So, yes, yeah, Scotland versus the Wirral. What is going to happen? <laughs> Best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. Here is your first question, and it is all about the Queen through the decades, Richard. Mm, an interesting one, this. We're going to show you five pictures now of the Queen, but you have to tell us in which decade these pictures were taken, please. Ooh. Good. Yeah. Very good. Let's reveal these pictures of the Queen through the decades. And here they come. We have got a... B. C. D. 
D. and E. There we are, five pictures of the Queen through the decades. Ian and Julie, you're our lowest scorers, so you get to go first. You think? Yeah. I think so. We're going to go for D, the 1980s, please. D, the 1980s. The 1980s for D, say Ian and Julie. Gary and Billy. Go for A. Do you want to talk us through all the others? We think A is the 30s, C is the 60s, D is right, B, 2010s, and E is, is the 50s. 50s yeah. Coronation. But we think we'll go for A, the 30s. OK, A, the 30s. So we have the 1980s and we have the 1930s. Ian and Julie went for the 1980s for D. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the 1980s. It's right. <laughs> 37. <laughs> Very good. Gary and Billy, meanwhile, have gone for the 1930s for A. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the 1930s. Not the 1930s. So, very well done, Ian and Julie. After one question, you're up 1-0. Yeah, she's born in 1926, the Queen. She's looking yeah. good on it, isn't she? Mm. So, uh, 1920s was the answer there. It would have got you 53 points. We'll leave B for a moment, because that's the, the lowest score. Now, C, the clue is there that uh, she's with JFK and Jackie. 60s. 1960s, yep. We scored you 48. Uh, e is uh, the coronation. 50s. 1950s. We scored you 77. And B, that's a Golden Jubilee celebration. So it's 2002, the 2000s. And that's the best answer up there. Very well done if you said that, 29 points. Thank you very much. OK, here comes your second question. Gary and Billy, you need to win this one to stay in the game, so best of luck. Our second question today is all about roof styles. <laughs> there we go, Richard. <laughs> about time, isn't it? About time. Uh, we're going to show you five different terms now for styles of roof, but with alternate letters missing, can you fill in the gaps and name that roof? <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our roofs with holes in. We have got SDLBC, BRE, DM, GBE, and MNAD. There we are. SDLBC, BRE, DM, GBE, and MNAD. Gary and Billy, you will go first. Um, we'll go for Gable. OK, you're going to go for Gable. Yeah. Uh, Ian and Julie, do you fancy talking us through the others you there? You can go. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it, thanks. <laughs> and I think Dome would be in the middle. Um, the bottom one, I'm not sure. Neither am I sure for the second. I'm just going to fill in some answers on that top one. And I think we're going to try Saddleback. Saddleback. So we have Gable and we have Saddleback. Gary and Billy said Gable. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Gable. It's right. 68. 68 for Gable. Ian and Julie, meanwhile, have gone for the top one and they're saying Saddleback. Let's see if that's right. Certainly fits, but is it right, Saddleback? It is right. Oh. And it wins you the point. Very well done indeed, Ian and Julie. We all know what that means. 22 is what it scores. But it means, after only two questions, you are straight through to the final 2-0. Very smartly worked out. Uh, great playing there. Saddle back. Um, now, Dome um, would have lost you the point because it would have scored you 70. And the other two are the lowest scorers. That bottom one there, do you know that? Vampire Weekend have got a song called Oh, this. Mansard. Mansard Roof, yeah. Hmm. Mansard would have scored you nine. That's what it is. Slopes in four directions and gets steeper halfway down. Um, you see it in France a lot, named after Mansard, the Frenchman. Nine points for that. And the other one? 
Bird. It's curved. Barrel. Barrel. There you go. A barrel, barrel would have roof. scored you five points. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Gary and Billy, I'm afraid it is you. But you've, okay. you've done incredibly well. Head-to-head, -head, lots to be proud of there. Yeah. You'll be back next time, and maybe you can even take it one step further then. But uh, meantime, thanks very much indeed, Definitely. Gary okay. and Billy. <laughs> but for Ian and Julie, it is now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Ian and Julie. Well done. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £4,250. <laughs> now, 250 of those pounds uh, were earned by you. You put them there by scoring a pointless answer. How can you get another point in this answer? What is going to help you get one? Um, mm. Blind luck. <laughs> <laughs> think, think, fair enough. I think uh, I would like to see some, maybe some Beatles up there. Yeah, some Doctor Who would be good. Yeah, that would, that, would, that would be good. Okay, well, as always, you get to choose from the four things that appear on the board. Let's hope today's selection's got something on it for you. Uh, we have got... Patriotic songs. Team sport in 2018, horse films, and Antarctica. Oh, what do we think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. What do you think? I love a horse film. <laughs> um, I think. What do you think of horse films? Patriotic songs or horse films? Horse films, you know. I don't know any <laughs> horse films. Um, love a horse film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Black, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, horse films. Songs? I don't know. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Okay. You go. Uh, we'll have patriotic songs, please. Patriotic songs, it is. Okay. Very best of luck. I'm going to go on record as saying the first one of these might be the easiest for the two of you. We are looking for any <laughs> word of five letters or more in one of the following three songs, please. <laughs> any word of five letters or more in O'Flower of Scotland. <laughs> We're looking for any word of five letters or more in I Vow to Thee, My Country. And we are looking for words of five letters or more in Guide Me, O oh, Thou Great Redeemer. So, Flower of Scotland, I Vow to Thee, My Country, that's the uh, 1918 version, or Guide Me, O oh, Thou Great Redeemer. Obviously, none of the words that are in the titles there, but any other five letter or more word. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. You don't have to answer all three categories, just focus on whichever ones you like the look of. Are you ready? Yes. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Stick me the first one. So yeah, we're going to go with the later verses. Right. Say the first. The autumn leaves now lie thick and still. Over land that's lost now and those so dearly held. Right, then it's feeling yeah. about in the second ones like that. Um, and in the past, uh, those days are like past, past now, and in and the past, the past they then. must remain, mm -hmm. for we can still, still rise now. Still. Right, so we'll go for the last one, autumn leaves, because nobody ever throws up. Uh-huh. OK, autumn leaves, I think we've got it. Autumn leaves, I think. Um, go for thick, thick still. Thick, still. Autumn. Autumn? No, those, 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 those. those. Yeah. yeah, OK. 20 seconds, we'll just chill. Then I think okay. we might leave the bottom two ones. Are you happy? Yeah. Should we, so. uh, we can go, let's go for it. Yeah. Go, stop yeah. the clock. <laughs> OK, <laughs> what three answers <laughs> are you <laughs> going to give us? Um, we're going to go for those. Those. Uh, still. Still. And thick. And thick. And these are all from, all from the first from 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 yeah. yes. OK, now, of those three answers, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Uh, Think thick. thick. Okay, yeah. thick we'll put last. Least likely to be pointless? Uh, still. Still, and then those goes in the middle. Okay, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order then, and here they are. We have got still, those, and thick. Well, very, very best of luck. We're looking for words of five letters or more. Uh, in the song, O oh Flower of Scotland, Three good answers there. I, that felt quite nicely, I, I'd yes. say, for you. Some um, dog answers, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you like to spend your winnings on should you win that 4,250 prize? 
um, I think I would um, love to spend it on some lovely new books and perhaps a nice library in our new house to, to put them in, or some lovely bookshelves anyway. Very nice. <laughs> lovely. Oh, Ian, what about you? Uh, I, would, I, I, would quite, I need a new guitar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we'll, we'll spend the rest on a, on a nursery. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice indeed. Well, let's hope, let's hope one of these answers will win that jackpot for you still. As I say, if words of five letters or more in O'Flower of Scotland, you've gone for still. If it's pointless, you will win that jackpot of £4,250. Let's see how many of our 100 people said still. It's right. It just has to be pointless now if you to win that jackpot. £4,250 riding on this. We're going down through the teens. We're into single figures. We're still going down, still going down, still going down! Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Every single thing you said you wanted to spend the prize money on sounded wonderful. So that's uh, that's tremendous. That four thousand two hundred and fifty pounds is making its way to you. Still was a pointless answer. Uh, very, very well done indeed, Ian and Julie. Fantastic. <laughs> What a terrific performance today. Very, very well done. Uh, if we'd had to go on those, would have scored you one point. Mm. Thick was another pointless answer. So, well done. Wow. We definitely picked on the right bit of the song, I have to say, because most words actually scored points, apart from there's six pointless answers, and I think you said pretty much all of them in your uh, deliberation. Let's take a look. You said leaves. There's still, there's thick. Which is the only one you missed out? Because the other two are dearly and past. Those are the pointless answers there. You don't care about the others, but let's take a look. Because <laughs> there, there may be people who've gone for these. We will go to um, the next one, which is uh, I vow to thee my country. Another faithful gentleness makes. Those are all pointless answers. You could have had armies, bounds, fortress, herd, never paths, price shining, silently suffering. There's undaunted whole. Those are all pointless answers. And Finally, guide me, O oh, thou great redeemer, anxious, fiery, pillar, tread. You could have had death, fears, hells, still stream. This is a good poem. Death, fears, hells, still stream, I think so. Uh, <laughs> subside, verge, whence. Nice. I tell you, if you ever do anything about hymns or poems, whence is in there somewhere, isn't it? Uh, well done if you get any of those at home and terrific work uh, to our Glaswegians in the studio. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thanks once again to our brilliant winners, Ian and Julie, who take away today's jackpot of £4,250. Very well done. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>